Hi, welcome to Deep Recaps. Today's film is a Japanese horror comedy, a zombie movie, unlike any you've seen before. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a girl in blood-soaked clothes holding an axe to a man. She cries and pleads with him to stop, but he is acting strange. He does not listen to her and bites her neck. It turns out it's just a shooting for a movie. The director, Higurashi, cuts the scene. This was already the 42nd take, and he still does not like what he sees. He goes full Stanley Kubrick on the girl, scolding her for not showing proper fear in the face of death. She looks properly scared now. He slaps the other actor around and leaves while fuming with anger. The crew members follow him and leave the two actors alone. While the silent cameraman keeps shooting, the girl, named Chinatsu, wipes her tears and bravely says that she'll do her best. The boy, Ku, gives her his best support. They sit down and talk about how crazy the director is behaving. Even the axe is real. One of the crew members, Kasahara, comes with a bucket of blood, saying that the director has asked him to sprinkle it on the roof. Chinatsu is anxious and wants to practice her part, but Ku stops her and calms her down. The two, along with the makeup artist, now talk about the movie they're shooting. Now tells them that director Higurashi is in debt funding this movie and really needs it to be successful. He also visited hundreds of haunted locations in Japan and settled in the place that they're in right now. Now accidentally lets out that something terrible happened in this place. Before this place was a water filtration plant, it was a place for human experiments conducted by the Japanese army. Both the actors freak out on hearing this. To change the topic to something lighter, now reveals that she is learning self-defense and demonstrates it on Ku. But things are still tense between the three. Outside, Kasahara encounters another crew member behaving strangely. Despite being scared at first, he commends the man on his great makeup and acting. Before he realizes what is happening, the man bites him, and Kasahara's screams of terror are useless. His arm gets torn off and thrown inside. The three are scared at first. It gets worse when Kasahara stumbles in and falls on Ku. The three of them think that the director is making him do this and laugh nervously, but now realizes that his arm really is torn off and the crew member is dead. Ku hastily drags himself away and Chinatsu is attacked by the first man. Chinatsu pushes him outside and they shut the door on him. As the three try to calm themselves, Kasahara wakes up and attacks them. Ku grabs his arm, takes him outside, and closes the door, while the silent cameraman shoots everything. The three gather to collect their breath again, but they see that the director is shooting the whole scene. Despite their protests, he keeps rolling the camera. Just as he's about to reveal that it has something to do with the blood from earlier, another crew member, Yamako, pushes the director aside and runs outside. He immediately starts screaming. The director yells at the silent cameraman to continue shooting and follows out. Ku tries to make a call, but he finds no signal. Now reveals the complete legend of this place, that spilling blood will summon monsters back. Just then, the director knocks on the door, so they let him in. But he has a nasty surprise for them. He pushes Yamako, who is also behaving strangely, into them. The director keeps shooting the scene for their genuine reactions. Now kills Yamako, while the director happily says that this is the real face of fear. Ku knocks him out, and the three run to the car. But the keys are with Kasahara. Kasahara appears just then and opens the door. The director also arrives and happily screams action from the other side. Chinatsu manages to take the bag with the car keys from Kasahara, but he chases her across some fields and down into a tunnel. Just as she's about to escape, another zombie appears before her. Thankfully, Ku knocks down Kasahara and takes her outside now lets them in just before the zombie reaches them. Inside, Chinatsu and Ku hug, but they see a huge gash on her leg, probably from a bite. So, now picks up her axe and tries to kill Chinatsu. Ku is unable to stop now, so Chinatsu runs outside. Now follows her while kicking the zombies and the director all the way to the top of the building. Ku also arrives, but now utilizes her self-defense lessons on him. So, Ku yells at the cameraman to help him. The silent cameraman puts the camera aside and goes to stop now. Chinatsu continuously screams in terror as the three fight in the background. Immediately after, we see that Nao has killed Ku. He tries to hug Chinatsu, but she is now repulsed by him. As she leaves, 
crying. Now pulls Ku back. Down on the ground, Shinatsu is terrified to see everyone dead. She hides in a shack, which has a pentagram drawn with blood on its wall. After she calms herself down, she checks on her wound, only to realize that it was a makeup wound. Suddenly, someone enters the shack. Shinatsu holds her breath as the person leaves. She then goes outside, where she finds an axe. She locates Ku on the roof and goes to him. Shinatsu calls him and Ku turns around. We then see a scene similar to that at the very beginning, but this time, her fear is real. Now wakes up suddenly, but then dies just as suddenly. The director arrives just then and laughs, saying he'll put this scene in the climax. Declaring her love for him, she beheads him. The director scolds her for killing his actors. Shinatsu explodes with anger and chases the director. When he falls, she chops him multiple times and kills him. The cameraman silently continues shooting, while Shinatsu walks across the roof with a dazed look on her face. She finds the pentagram of blood and stands in the middle of it. As the camera raises up into the air, she stares into it. Credits begin to roll, and the cameraman yells cut. We then go back to one month earlier. A studio wants director to shoot a special drama. The story is a group of filmmakers shooting a zombie movie, but they encounter real zombies, essentially turning this whole movie into zombieception. The studio wants Higurashi to do it in one take, and it will be broadcast live. So, they will have no retakes and no delays. Fuck it, we're doing it live. Higurashi thinks that they're joking and laughs, but things immediately get awkward when he realizes that they're actually serious. Get ready for some name changes, guys, because this is bound to get confusing. Now's real name is Harumi Higurashi, director Higurashi's wife. Harumi scolds her husband for taking such a risky project. They have a daughter, also named Harumi, so we'll call her Harumi Jr. Harumi Jr. is an aspiring filmmaker. She has a habit of being a perfectionist and often gets into fights with her own team. Later, Higurashi conducts an audition for the movie, One Cut of the Dead. Ooh, this movie is meta. He brings in actors for every role, from the director to the crew members. Some of them we've seen earlier, while some are new faces. Shinatsu's real name is Aika Matsumoto, a former idol. They all sit down for a table read, but the woman supposed to play the role of now has a baby and disturbs their work. They still manage to work things out and rehearse in their office. The cameraman, Taniguchi, has a back pain, which is affecting his work, but only his assistant knows this. At the Higurashi household, Harumi Jr. asks her if she will take up acting again. But Harumi is skeptical of it, even though she's read the script to One Cut of the Dead several times. Harumi Jr. tries to convince her to continue acting, but Harumi gently refuses. Higurashi is having trouble managing the actor of Ku, named Kamiya, and Chinatsu's actress, Aika, as they are both popular celebrities and very fussy. The actor who plays the director, and now, are not serious and mediocre at best. That night, Higurashi cries while drinking and looking at pictures of his daughter. Harumi Jr. does not really respect her father, and Higurashi blames his own incompetence for that. Despite all the issues, preparation begins in earnest. Even Harumi and her daughter have come to watch. Harumi Jr. is a big fan of Kamiya and is busy fangirling over him. But before they even begin, disaster strikes. The actor for the director and now get into a minor car accident on the way to the site. Since they're in a deserted location, they have no backup actors. Director Higurashi decides to take up the role of the director. This is getting even more meta. They still need someone for the role of now. For that, Harumi Jr. lifts up her mother's hand. Since Harumi has read the script many times and was a former actress, and because who the hell else is going to do it, the producer gives her the role. When these changes are announced, everyone is in shock. Kamiya immediately says that he'll quit, but Higurashi talks softly to him and convinces him that this whole thing is centered around Kamiya. Unknown to anyone, Yamako has recurring diarrhea, and it starts hitting him. The time for the live airing begins, and they start shooting. The producers look on from their studio, while Harumi Jr. gleefully watches the crew members at work. We then see the opening scene of the movie play out again, but from a different perspective. Higurashi goes off script and yells at Aika. The slaps he gave Kamiya were also improvisations, as he was letting his frustrations out on the entitled actor. The producers are happy with what they see. They too are probably sick of Kamiya's shit. They go on to their next scene, but unknown to anyone, 
Hosoda, an alcoholic, has drunk an entire bottle of sake and has passed out. Higurashi tries to take him into his next scene, but he's in no condition to go in. So, the three actors have to improvise and talk about Nao's self-defense. Higurashi improvises by lifting Hosoda, who pukes on Kasahara's face. He cries while putting on his prop and goes into his scene. Hosoda pukes again, and the producers are super happy with how authentic everything looks. Thankfully, the crew members are handling every new issue behind the scenes. The crew, as usual, are the real heroes of this story. In the scene where director Higurashi is going full crazy, Yamako is hit with another diarrhea attack, causing the scene where he rushes out. The actors have to improvise with every turn. Yamako goes outside and poops in his pants, resulting in the screams everyone heard from inside. The producers are completely stressed out and decide to stop shooting, but Harumi Jr. comes in and patches up scenes, saying that Yamako can come in at a different point in the script. They indicate this to the actors, using cards. Outside, Higurashi tells the makeup people to do Yamako's makeup while he's providing fertilizer to the ground. They manage to salvage the scene, resulting in the heart-stopping product that we saw. In the scene where the camera sits on the ground, it's actually because the cameraman Taniguchi's back pain finally caught up to him, so his assistant was the one who picks up the camera next. When she falls, Kasahara, who is supposed to be chasing them, pushes her up. Elsewhere, Kamiya yells at Higurashi for slapping him. Higurashi tries to apologize, but his wife comes and gives him another slap and kicks him back to set. Higurashi tells Harumi to calm down, but she's really worked up. Harumi Jr. explains that whenever her mother acts, she really dives into her character. In her youth, during an action scene, she apparently broke a man's arm, resulting in a ban from all movie sets. She's a real Daniel Day-Lewis. In the scene where she chases Aika, well, that was completely off script. Kasahara was supposed to come in, but she changed the entire scene and actually hit all the actors, including her own husband. On the rooftop, Higurashi instructed the camerawoman to turn away, resulting in a continuous scene of Aika screaming. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, Harumi pushes Kamiya so hard that he accidentally knocks down the camera crane, so the crew members and Higurashi choke Harumi until she goes to sleep. While they put the prop on Harumi, Higurashi urges Aika to keep screaming. In the scene where Aika hides in the shack, the man who approached her is just a crew member, giving her further instructions. Director Higurashi says that the crane broke and they need to think of something to get four meters high for the final shot. The producer commands him to scrap that part. Higurashi has no choice but to obey and kill the climax to his project. But then, Harumi Jr. comes up with another plan. In the last scene, Harumi woke up in surprise because of the human pyramid in place for the crane. But thankfully, Higurashi pulls her down. In the final scene, Kamiya almost loses his head, but Harumi Jr. saves it. For the human pyramid, everyone steps in. Even the entitled Kamiya and the unbelieving producer. They all count down the 15 seconds needed for the credits to roll. When that is done, they all laugh with relief. Harumi gives her father a picture of them together, and the two smile at each other. At the end of the movie, we see that the actors acting as crew members are actually crew members. This will be the third time saying the word, but One Cut of the Dead is one of the most meta movies out there. The first act plays on most horror tropes, where an ancient evil is awakened and the innocent girl is the only survivor. But it is the second act that pushes the boundaries of narration and weaves together two different acts into one fine movie. The movie itself was made with a meager budget of $25,000 US, going to show the difference that a proper story, good acting, and fine directing can make. Subscribe for more content like this. Turn on notifications if you'd like to be the first to see new drops, and leave a like to help support the channel. Thank you everyone for your support. See you next time.